Foggy first date, huh? He's really funny, Linda. Oh, you smell great. I'm around. I got a raise. You pay. This is going too well. You've been dating six months. Mm, seven. Let's stay in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, I think he's the one. Uh, this is a briefcase. A uh, place to shelter valuable ideas, a guardian for work in progress. But um, now it's something more. Now it's a lunch bag. Because now there's Top Shelf from Hormel. Top Shelf microwaves in two minutes, but tastes like you might have made it from scratch. And since it requires no refrigeration, you can pack it in a briefcase and lunch, as they say, is in the bag. Hm. Top Shelf from Hormel. Hey, shelter! So much for campfires. Death and cologne. Campfires smell great. No, you smell great. <laughs> no any good ghost story? Easy to wear, hard to resist. Hi. Don't miss the all-new Saturday Night Live Christmas show with Andy McDowell and Tracy Chapman. Saturday, what do you get the Golden Girls for Christmas? Dorothy said you'd like something crotchless. Then Empty Nest gets a humbug surprise. Follow along your own time. You got doctoring to do. Then an all-new Bob Hope Christmas with Barbara Eaton, the judge, and a special tribute to John Wayne. Bob Hope's Christmas from Hawaii after the comedy Saturday. I'm Paul Majors. And I'm Diana Pierce. Next on Care Love and News, Minnesotans bundle up and brace themselves for winter's first big blast of Arctic weather. A tearful Soviet defector talks about why she's leaving everything behind for a new life. Charges of rape inside a Minneapolis mental health center. And in the extra, why more men are taking steps to share the responsibility of birth control. Care Love and News is next. You come on smooth. Introducing Bud Glide. You lead me on. You get me going, and then you're gone. Cold filtered for smooth taste. Dry brewed for no aftertaste. Bud Dry. It comes on smooth, then it's gone. You come on smooth, and then you're gone. Welcome to Lumina Sedan. It has been designed with care for you and yours. Listen to the heartbeat. With rear doors that open wide, plenty of room for the family to enjoy. And even Scotch Guard fabric protector comes standard. The family Lumina Sedan. When it comes to new ideas, nobody's winning like. gonna freak when he sees these new wheat checks. What's this? New whole grain wheat checks. Whole grain? Like the hole in your brain. I like them the way they were. How much they're tastier? New wheat checks are tastier. Your mouth will love them. Oh, spare me. Well, dear. Hmm. He's smiling. I can't believe it. New tastier wheat checks. Your mouth will love them. <laughs> most watched newscast care 11 news with paul majors diana pierce tom Ryder on sports and meteorologist paul douglas good evening the first real blast of arctic weather is sweeping into minnesota and western wisconsin tonight it's a leading edge of a system that is bringing sub-zero temperatures and dangerous wind chills to the state Minnesotans are used to the cold, but it's never easy to deal with, and it always causes extra problems. I haven't been warm all day. The furnace went out last night. Warm hats and heavy gloves are standard apparel for anyone who's outside tonight. Temperatures are hovering near zero and will fall much farther before morning. To the north in Grand Forks, the situation is even worse. Residents brace themselves against 20 degree below temperatures this morning, but tonight's low will dip even lower. Forecast lows for tonight range from 30 below in the upper regions of Minnesota to 20 below in the St. Cloud area. The metro area can expect temperatures of about 10 below and wind chills anywhere from 20 to 40 below. 
Those kinds of temperatures can be deadly for people who are outside for too long with too little protection. As Carol Evans' Dennis Stoffer reports, a growing number of Minnesotans who call the streets their home are potential victims. Why? Move over the car. A drunk is taken into custody in downtown St. Paul. This one for trying to force his way into the Union Gospel Mission, where he has a history of being troublesome. It's a pattern often repeated many times a night in St. Paul. Chronic alcoholics who can't be left in the cold, but who many shelters won't accept. Frank Langan is one of the police officers who has to deal with them. Oh, it's definitely getting worse, and the majority of them are alcoholics. They're not street people. They're definitely alcoholics. Less than two weeks ago, two chronic alcoholics died in St. Paul because nobody found them before it was too late. The Union Gospel Mission is one of many shelters that serve the homeless, and many are alcoholic. But only those who stay completely passive are allowed to stay here. One of the men who died two weeks ago was a regular here at the Gospel Mission. He had a bed paid for that was unoccupied that night. This place rarely fills up, but it's a place that's not designed or equipped to handle chronic alcoholics. In warmer seasons, many just stay outdoors, and there's always detox. But on a busy night, it fills up, forcing police to often shop around for a place that will take in someone who's intoxicated. The violent ones have no place to go, and they're often the ones police deal with so often they know them by name. On this night, Ralphie is accepted in detox. On another night, he might not be. Dennis Stauffer, Care 11 News, St. Paul. St. Paul agencies are trying to find ways to better serve chronic alcoholics, either by intervention or by expanding detox facilities. But a key problem is a lack of funding to pay for any new facilities or programs. Several motorists have found out the hard way that cold temperatures don't mean the lake ice is safe to drive on. One car is still submerged in Lake George after breaking through the ice this weekend. Three others have fallen through Coon Lake in the past three weeks. Anoka County Water Patrol officers say ice that's thinner than 10 or 12 inches is not safe to drive on and it will be at least a week before most lakes freeze to that depth. The American woman arrested and thrown into an El Salvadoran prison two weeks ago is free tonight. Jennifer Casalo, a church worker, was arrested and charged with storing weapons for leftist rebels. Police say they found grenades, dynamite, and thousands of rounds of ammunition in her garden. Casalo was freed due to a lack of evidence, but she was also deported because El Salvador's president says he's convinced of her guilt. She arrived safely in Miami tonight. Soviet defector Larissa Fursova came out of hiding in St. Paul today to talk about why she wants political asylum in the United States. The young actress says her dream is to be free, but as Carol Evans' Eric Olson reports, it'll take more than desire for Larissa's dream to come true. Unfurling the flag of freedom was an exciting moment for Larissa Fursova. The 24-year-old Soviet actress came out from behind it today, publicly requesting permanent residence in the United States. She is confident it will happen quickly. I was told that it's all a matter of paperwork now and that I should just wait a few days and I will be given all the papers that will solve my situation here. But it takes more than hopes and dreams to become a permanent U.S. citizen. It takes a lot of time and a lot of red tape. Anyone seeking asylum in this country begins their bureaucratic journey by filling out an application, four pages filled with detailed personal questions about the person's background. Then there are personal interviews and a court decision on each case. The process takes five to six months on the average, and even then there are no guarantees the person may remain in the United States. After one year, people granted asylum must file for permanent resident status or they'll be returned to their home country. Of the 60,000 or so who applied last year, only 40% were accepted. By law, only 5,000 people nationwide each year can become permanent residents and later citizens. And desire to live in the country is not enough. No matter what their, their case is, they still have to show that they have a well-founded fear of persecution should they be returned to their home country. Despite the odds, Larissa is confident and positive she's made the right decision. That I have one dream. Um, without this dream, I can't live. Whether Larissa's dream becomes reality is for those already here to decide. Bye -bye. Eric Olson, Carol 11 News, St. Paul. Larissa will be staying with a host family in Mendota Heights while her case is being studied. Immigration officials say they're expecting more requests for asylum by Soviet citizens because their government is relaxing international travel laws. A mental patient at a Minneapolis health center is facing rape charges tonight. He's accused of brutally attacking and raping a female worker at the Andrew Residence, a mental health treatment center. The suspect has a history of mental problems and chemical dependency. As Carol Evans' Bernie Grace reports, the incident is prompting a review of safety measures at the center. 
29-year-old Harold Szczynski has been charged with criminal sexual conduct. He's accused of attacking and raping a mental health worker here at the Andrew residence in Minneapolis, a mental health treatment center. According to a criminal complaint, Szczynski, armed with a knife, forced the victim into a third-floor room, allegedly told her, shut up, do what I say, or I'll kill you. The woman was then raped. All of this has raised questions about security at the facility. We have been meeting with staff groups and with individual staff members to process this tragedy and to obtain suggestions for ensuring safety for our staff and residents. Center Administrator Karen, Karen Foy declined to answer questions on camera, but read a prepared statement. She says the facility has a variety of security systems, including audio door buzzers, emergency pull cords throughout the building, and a paging system. Systems, Foy says, meet or exceed recommended safety standards. Yet Foy wonders that this is enough. This incident has made us look more closely at whether these generally accepted standards are sufficient for community-based facilities. The suspect has a criminal record and, according to police, has a history of mental health and chemical dependency problems. Szczynski appeared in court today where his bail was set at $100,000. Bernie Grace, Care 11 News, Minneapolis. The Andrew residence has been in operation for 16 years. Officials say they've never had an incident like this one. The threat of another teacher strike is looming in the Twin Cities tonight. Fridley's 160 teachers overwhelmingly gave their union leaders the power to call a strike if a new contract isn't reached soon. The union and the district are only about 1% apart on a salary agreement. 300 Twin Cities X-ray technologists set a December 27th strike deadline today in their contract dispute with 12 area hospitals. The hospitals increased their original contract offer today, but the union rejected that. The union claims an x-ray strike could cripple the hospitals, but hospital administrators say the effect of a walkout would be minimal. Minnesotans are often swamped by requests to give generously during the holidays. Now the Charities Review Council is issuing some advice to consumers before they part with their money. First, make sure you know the organization you're dealing with. Many have similar names. Second, find out more about the charity and how your contribution will be spent. And finally, never give cash. Always write a check. The Review Council stresses that virtually all charities are honest and worthwhile. Those kinds of organizations have no problems answering detailed questions about their charity. There's much more to come tonight. Paul Douglas has some health tips on staying safe from this frigid weather. Residents of another communist country celebrate the lifting of the Iron Curtain. In the extra changing attitudes about who should be responsible for birth control. And the Gophers try to extend their home court winning streak. Many families shopping for a TV this holiday season won't settle for anything less than one of the many RCA color tracks available at Best Buy. This 27-inch remote-controlled color track monitor receiver has MTS stereo sound, a 5-jack audio video panel so you can hook it up to your stereo, and on-screen displays for easy remote control picture adjustments. Best of all is the low Best Buy price, just $599. Don't settle for less than RCA and don't pay more. Greetings, all you people out there in the wild and wacky world of holiday shopping. How about a McDonald's hamburger for only 49 cents? It's just the break you and your wallet need. McDonald's 49 cent burger break. Now hamburgers are only 49 cents. Yes, just 49 cents. So don't shop till you drop. Take a break at the Golden Arches for this holiday classic. But hurry, it'll be over in the wink of an eye. Take a 49 cent burger break now at McDonald's. This year, turn the milk sleep on for last-minute Christmas savings and enter into a world of enchantment. Santa has us loading up on last-minute holiday values for you. The comfortable fit of stylish pepper wash jeans from Lee will make any elf happy. Rugged Boys Rider jeans are only $15.99. Or take your choice of Lee Jr. Easy Rider, Missy Relaxed Rider, or Men's Rider jeans, just $19.99 each. Santa says, save while there's still time. And then rest easy. Today, Lancôme Paris enters the era of chronocosmetology with Noctisome Renewal Night Cream. With its unique time-release Neosome system technology, Noctisome supplies vital ingredients all through the night, a definite beauty action, so every complexion can wake up to fresh, clear, smooth, beautiful-looking skin. Like Noctisome helps you put your best face forward each morning. Noctisome Renewal Night Treatment, Lancôme Paris. You'll find it at Dayton's. The winning numbers in tonight's Lotto America jackpot were drawn just moments ago. They are 3, 19, 24, 36, 37, and 39. 
And tonight's jackpot is estimated $2 million. And we'll repeat those numbers a little later in the newscast. In datelines, the Iron Curtain is rising on yet another Eastern Bloc country. Bulgaria's ruling Communist Party voted itself out of power today and will ask the National Congress to allow a multi-party political system. The decision came as pro-democracy -pro demonstrators clogged the streets of Sofia demanding an end to communist domination. The Navy's troubled Trident missile program got a big boost today with a successful launch from an underwater submarine. The launch had been delayed by protests and technical problems. The weapon is considered the most powerful in the Navy's arsenal. Two of the four previous test launches had failed. And residents of Richmond, Virginia are digging out from the storm to dump up to 10 inches of snow. The heavy snow down power lines snarled traffic and caused several accidents. However, there have been no reports of serious injuries from the storm. Paul Douglas is out in the backyard. Now, that's very unusual to get that kind of snow in Richmond, yeah, Virginia. Very, it's very unusual. And, and it seems like the Washington, D.C. area and that whole area has been getting more snow yeah. than even we. You seems like. Count the number of plows on one hand in, in Richmond. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, Washington, D.C. has seen about twice as much snow so far as we have here in the Twin Cities. Weird. Time to have some fun with negative numbers in the backyard. And standing out here while Paul was reading datelines, I, I just came to the profound conclusion we don't get many stale cold fronts here. No, we get them fresh, brand spanking new, still reeking of the Arctic tundra. Coldest air mass since February 23rd, now oozing into the state. Once again, we have the uh, icy tingles up the nose and the squeaky snow underfoot, a sure sign that it's below zero, already minus two and dropping fast. And I know we're all hardy Minnesotans and western Wisconsinites, but it might not be a bad idea to review a few cold weather survival tips. Stuff that you've heard before. Layers of clothing will keep you warmer than one big bulky overcoat. Mittens, of course, are warmer than gloves. Wear a hat. I know I'm guilty of not doing this some nights. Army studies suggest 70% of the heat escaping your body leaves right through the top of your head. Uh, yes, getting from point A to point B may be tough tomorrow morning. Give yourself some extra time to warm up the vehicle. A winter survival kit in the trunk, not a bad idea. Jumper cables could be helpful. And fuel line the icer. When it gets this cold, the water separates in your gas tank and can freeze up, and that can be real unpleasant. Some of that icy heat might not be a bad idea tonight. And don't forget Fifi and Fido. Unless you own a very warm, well-insulated shelter, bring them indoors. Don't chance it. Don't tempt fate. And remember to keep water, not ice or snow, in the water dish. At temperatures this cold, that's darn tough to do. Good idea to bring them indoors, if in doubt. Here's our weather spy photo tonight. Look at the aurora borealis. In honor of Will Steger reaching the South Pole, we decided to show this photo taken by Dr. John Rosenberg. He lives up in North Oaks. He was down exploring the South Pole a couple of years ago. When this shot was taken, he said it was 100 below zero Fahrenheit. I wonder what the wind chill was. Gulp. 10 was the high today, a low of minus 2 right now, almost an inch of fluff. Light powdery snow overnight. Clear and minus 2, a northwest wind at 13, the wind chill 33 below. It's noticeable. The humidity 32 and the barometer on the rise. From outer space, the polar vortex, a hunk of air which was literally up over the Arctic Circle about four days ago, sliding south, moisture wrapping around this cold, closed low in the upper atmosphere, producing some lake effect snow in the arrowhead. I think it will stay clear, and I think we will see minus 10 by morning. Check out these highs, 74 this afternoon in Miami. 63 degrees in Phoenix, 71 Los Angeles. Shut up, Paul. 16 below in Winnipeg. That's relevant because here is where our winds will be blowing from tomorrow. This Arctic ooze is going to pass right over the state tomorrow, the coldest day of the week, as the core of this air mass passes overhead. Most of us won't even see zero for a high. We will see a few patchy clouds and flurries. No significant snow in sight. Will there be snow for Christmas? Some answers and the 11 outlook coming up next. Now the Velveteen Rabbit invites you and your family to win a fabulous trip to Hawaii. An exciting London visit. A cruise in the Caribbean. Or a $500 shopping trip to Target. Plus, every store will give away one big, lovable surprise. Details at your local Target. They predicted a gloomy year for everyone. But they didn't count on Mazda with cars and trucks engineered to feel just right. Now Mazda is racing toward an all-time sales record with record-setting deals that can save you up to $1,000 now. 
The Mazda, race to the record. At your Twin Cities Mazda dealer, now. Mr. Scrooge has been seeing more ghosts than usual this year. They are after the noose. Stuffing, stuffing. It's the five-piece holiday meal deal from Kentucky Fried Chicken with two buttermilk biscuits and that delicious new stuffing for just $4.99. It's meant for two. More ghosts? We brought a ten-piece holiday meal with four buttermilk biscuits and more stuffing for just $9.99. You have money up there? Get the five or ten-piece holiday meal deal at Kentucky Fried Chicken today. Same thing every Saturday. He puts on those old blue jeans and goes out with that old dog. He says he's going to bring back dinner, but all he ever brings back is that old dog. Here's to old dogs, Saturday mornings, and comfortable blue jeans. Wrangler. Wrangler men's and boys' jeans on sale this week at Target. I miss those designer earmuffs. The ears are cold and brittle tonight. Folks asking, will there be snow for Christmas? We may have a couple of inches. We could get a couple more Alberta clippers in here over the next week, but the pattern not right for heavy snow for at least a week. After that, anything could happen. Where there's the most snow on the ground, temperatures will get coldest tonight, under two inches from St. Cloud on south, still four to six Detroit Lakes to Duluth. 20 below already, War Road, two below in the city, six below Redwood Falls. Let's crank up the forecast tonight, six to 12 below. We're talking 30 to 40 below wind chills. Alexandria may see 20 below by morning. Tomorrow, patchy clouds and flurries. Bitter, 4 below to 2 above. It may get up to 0. Friday, 4 for a high after a low of minus 11. And then 10 with flurry Saturday, 16 possible on Sunday. Many more generous donations rolled into the Toys for Tots campaign headquarters today, and we appreciate that. Volunteers from the Edina B. Dalton Bookstore deliver 250 toys to the cause. The company matched the contributions from all of its employees. And our thanks to those folks. General Mills, Carol Evans' corporate neighbor down the street in Golden Valley, dropped off more than 30,000 Frisbees to the station this morning. Each and every one of them will help brighten the spirits of a needy child come Christmas. And employees from the Minnesota North Stars delivered more than 1,000 toys to our studios. The generous donations came from North Star fans who dropped off the gifts at recent home hockey games. Paul and I can get a little intimidating. We're out here babbling about thousands of toys and hundreds of dollars and blah, blah, blah. Bottom line is, this is only going to happen one toy at a time. Every toy has a unique story behind it, and I guarantee you every toy is going to make some child very, very happy come Christmas morning. We still need the mm -hmm. families dropping off toys, mm -hmm. and they're starting to come in now a little bit more. One week exactly left, and we need your help to make this a success this mm -hmm. year. Santa's still here. You can have your picture taken. Yeah. What, four to mm -hmm. seven at night? Four to seven. It's a good deal. All righty, sir. Thank you. See ya. Up next in the extra, part four of our special series on birth control in the 1990s. A look at the changing attitudes about who should be responsible for contraception and why when we come right back. Presenting the remarkable t Super Deep Fryer with standards such as an exclusive spill-proof lid, plus an ingenious device that ensures no spatters and no burns by lowering food from the outside, and an exceptional anti-odor filter. At TFAO, we elevated the standards for deep fryers and set one that's good enough to eat. TFAO. Available at Dayton's. Through the years, people have come to depend on Blue Cross to help make things better. And while much has changed, the importance of caring never will. It's why we started here over half a century ago. Blue Cross Blue Shield. And why we're still here today. Listening. Learning. Working together. You may not always see the care behind the card, but you can't miss the feeling it brings. baby's going to be here in a few months, and I don't have the faintest idea what to do. Well, if you take care of yourself, he uh, or she will get here on their own. Now, your mom quit smoking before you were born, and we came up with a lot of creative ways to eat broccoli. <laughs> and you turned out okay. I know. I've got a good start on all that stuff, but, Dad, what do you remember about diapers? <laughs> healthy mothers, <laughs> healthy babies are a family matter.
In tonight's extra, part four of our series on birth control and the changing responsibility for preventing pregnancy. Women have traditionally carried the principal burden of contraception and the principal blame when it doesn't work. That's still the case in much of American society, but as Care Levin's Gail Plawaka reports, that attitude may be slowly changing. I think it's both people's responsibility. Both. It, it has to be a mutual thing. It's a combination of both people, obviously. I think it would be uh, one-sided to say anything else. That's what most men will answer when asked who's responsible for birth control in a relationship. But women say these progressive attitudes do not reflect reality. Well, I'm sure it really isn't the way it should be. I don't think it's equally shared. One reason for this reality is that it's women who suffer the primary consequence of an unwanted pregnancy. Given that, would most American women, when engaging in sex with their partner, and the partner says, it's all right, honey, I'm on the pill, would you believe them? Would you believe them and would you trust them? And would you take that risk? Obviously, there is no pill for men because research has not produced one without serious side effects, some undesirable for both sexes. One of them, for example, is loss of libido. And it doesn't do women any good for men to uh, take a pill that, uh, that uh, reduces their sperm count if the men aren't interested in, uh, in reproduction. And one sitting is sufficient for the entire life of the diaphragm. No. Raphael does more than pay lip service to the idea of shared responsibility. Although his fiance, Sarah, is currently using oral contraceptives, he participates in research about long-term effects and lends an ear to her concerns. It's been a unique experience for Sarah. Whereas I don't think in general I would feel comfortable with other men because I think the prevailing attitude is you take care of it. And if we have to talk about it, it's just because something's not working for me. And Raphael believes his attitude has added a welcome dimension to their relationship. Part of the wonderful thing about the way we share that aspect of our relationship is that we are equally involved in all the decision making. And I feel like I'm very much invested in that. How's that? You okay? A vasectomy is the only method available in this country by which a man can take complete responsibility for preventing pregnancy. And nearly half a million men a year choose to undergo this procedure. But many more don't because of misunderstandings about what's involved and long-term effects. The fear, I guess, if I had a fear about it, was that, that it was going to be painful or uh, that it would affect my sexual drive. Keep breathing up your nose and up your mouth. I feel like I was kicked. While there is indeed a certain amount of pain involved, it's minimal. After administering local anesthesia, the urologist makes an incision. Okay, I'm going to cut it at this point. A small segment of the tubes on both sides of the scrotum that carry sperm from the testicles is then removed. The whole process takes no more than 20 minutes, and it in no way interferes with sexual desire or performance. And this 37-year-old father of two says the choice fits with his philosophy about marriage. In today's society, I guess we're, you know, relationships are, are a 50-50 deal and, and raising kids are a 50-50 deal and having the responsibility of kids are a 50-50 deal, so I don't know why birth control shouldn't be equally. Although more and more men are choosing to participate in the prevention of pregnancy, experts say that until safe, reversible male methods are developed, the bulk of the responsibility will continue to fall on women. Gail Plowacki, CARE 11 News. Researchers say that many men fear a vasectomy will have a negative effect on their sex drive. But studies show most men who've had the operation enjoy intimacy more because they don't have to worry about an unwanted pregnancy. We'll be right back. So you want brand name quality? at the hottest price. This holiday season, Target will do you right with prices like these. 20% off all boxed Christmas cards. And 20% off our entire stock of Christmas lights. If you want top quality at the hottest price, you got it. And if you're thinking this Christmas at Target, you can't go wrong, you're right.
70% of adult tooth loss is caused by gum disease. Strong, healthy gums are what keep your teeth where they belong. So be sure to brush, floss, and use the Waterpik Dental System. It cleans below the gum line, where brushing and flossing can't, to help protect and strengthen your gums. Get a hold of a Waterpik Dental System and hang on to your teeth. It's the time of the year when our thoughts turn to helping others. Our family would like you to join with the Cities 97 in supporting the Minnesota Food Shelf effort. The Cities 97 plays album cuts from rock to jazz, and with the help of 13 special artists, we have created a unique recording, the City Sampler. It's available on compact disc or cassette at Twin City Record Stores. And when you buy a City Sampler, the Cities 97 will donate all the profits to help feed Minnesota's poor. Everyone wants love, love's everywhere. It's something for Christmas we all can share, don't you know? Christmas real with all plush toys other than Velveteen Rabbit now one third off. Or for $44.99, give our Tyco Turbo train set and Turbo Hopper. Love makes you real. Last night the Timberwolves lose one in overtime. Tonight no they're in the ball game again. No T this time, but a close game. Billy Musselman's got to be walking the Nicollet Mall now saying three more points. Three more points. <laughs> <laughs> he talks to trees and that's really... It's a wonderful life. That's right. But he will be... He is a winner. We're lucky to have him. The Timberwolves went into the game tonight against Dallas, trying to rebound from last night's heartbreaking loss at the Indianas. We've been telling you, did they do it? Well, they didn't do it. Let's check out some highlights from the Dome now. Dallas guard Rolando Blackman drives in for two to give the Mavs a 10-point lead. He had 20 points tonight. Despite several mistakes by the Wolves, they did manage to put together a late comeback. Tony Campbell buries a three-pointer, and the Wolves come to within three. He had 21 tonight. After a free throw by the Mavericks, Brad Lohaus gets the ball in and uh, tries to, uh, you see this play right here, and there he is. He slams it home right there. Lohaus with 21 tonight. The Wolves had a chance to send the game into OT. Once again, Lohaus with a three-point attempt. It is rejected right there. Regulation time runs out. Dallas 90, Timberwolves 87. We talk with Ty Corbin after the game. When we had a chance to go up, we didn't make the shot, so we took bad shots. And um, then when we were in there, in there, we needed to make a stop. We didn't make a stop, and uh, they made runs at us. So, you know, it was, it was just uh, a bad rhythm going for us tonight. Now, before the game tonight against Dallas, the Timberwolves activated center Steve Johnson, placed Scott Roth in the injured reserve. This gives the Wolves a few more days to play with and entertain trade offers for Johnson. Johnson did not dress tonight, but watched his teammates from the bench area. He chose not to dress for the game tonight, but should be in uniform on Friday. Johnson has been through sort of a strange ordeal the past few weeks. I don't know. I think, uh, I think, I think what they've done is they've told everybody in the league that they don't want me. And now you go out and try to make a trade. You don't get anything. Everybody knows that, uh, um, but I'm not wanted. So it's going to, everybody's figured, well, we'll just wait. And eventually they're gonna, they'll, they'll give them away. And he kind of created his own situation, didn't he? The Gopher basketball team continued their winning ways tonight. They beat Detroit 89-61 for their fourth straight win. Highlights from the game tonight. Walter Bond hangs tough under the basket. Gets two on the rebound. He has 19. 19 was the magic number tonight for the Gophers. Willie Burton will get loose here. He will score. He also had 19 points. But the night belonged to Melvin Newburn. He goes in for two of his slams in the game. They give the Gophers a 23-point lead. He had 19 points tonight as the Gophers beat Detroit 89-61. They will travel to Manhattan to take on Kansas State Saturday. College football will lose one of its most respected coaches in 1990. Michigan's Bo Schembechler announced his resignation as coach, effective after the Rose Bowl on January 1, but will stay on as athletic director. Bo has spent 21 successful years at the University of Michigan, but his health suffered. He's had two bypass operations. Doctors told him to quit, and he yielded to their demands today. I don't want to run my luck too far. I've, um, I've been fortunate to um, coach for 20 years following a heart attack. And um, as you know, I've had uh, surgery a couple of times. And, um, and so I just think that um, at 60 years of age, uh, it's time for me to um, step down. 
The North Stars are off tonight. They'll try to break their seven games to get against Pittsburgh tomorrow night. NHL tonight scores Chicago winner, Toronto winner, Boston over Buffalo, Los Angeles won, New Jersey over the Islanders, and St. Louis beat the Rangers. In the NBA, as we say, uh, Dallas over the Timberwolves, the Lakers over Miami, Philadelphia over Atlanta, Boston over Seattle, Cleveland beat Milwaukee by six, and Phoenix is leading Utah 72 to 70. That game is in the fourth quarter. But the Wolves again losing by three. All right, Tommy. Thank you very much. Still to come, a colorful holiday tradition is renewed tonight in the Twin Cities. But first, another look at tonight's winning lottery numbers. Here's this week's Care 11 News Express run. Minneapolis Route 35S, Richfield to downtown Minneapolis. Leave 77th Street and 3rd Avenue South at 7.28 a.m., 62nd and Nicollet at 7.37 a.m., and arrives at 7th Street and 2nd Avenue South at 7.57 a.m. Join Care 11 and the MTC for a free ride on the Care 11 News Express. It is the season of savings at Menards Christmas Sale. Menards has hundreds of great gift ideas, like Zircon Stud Sensor 2. It locates studs electronically, perfect for hanging pictures and shelving, just $7.79. And save on Luskin's 25-foot tape measure with durable case, blade lock, and belt clip. A perfect stocking stuffer, just $4.99. Hurry in for a bundle of Christmas savings at Menards. Warm season's greetings to you all from Menards. Diane's old flame is back, and is Sammy excited? <laughs> Next time on Cheers. Wednesday at 1035 on Carry 11. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, there's no escaping the Christmas spirit. <laughs> because now through Saturday is Highland's Moonlight Madness Sale. The price is so low, it'll turn everyone into Santa. Right now, this 13-inch color TV with remote control is just $156. But it's all over at 9.30 p.m. Saturday. Highlands Moonlight Madness Sale, now through Saturday. Before we go tonight, one of the holiday's best-loved traditions came to life tonight in Minneapolis. Actors went through a dress rehearsal for the Nativity, a living pageant of Christmas at the Hennepin Avenue Church. The pageant features dozens of animals and more than 100 performers. Public performances start tomorrow and run through December 22nd with matinees on Saturdays and Sundays. And that is certainly worth seeing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What kind of weather can they expect? Well, cold for the next couple of days. No significant snow in sight to get you into the Christmas spirit. Check out these readings. Two below in the cities, 20 below in War Road. Tonight, the coldest night since February 23rd, Tommy. All right, let's go to Buck Hill very quickly right now. This is sort of a before and after of me skiing at Buck Hill in frigid weather. Admittedly, the form is a little rough. Well, okay, it's terrible. I admit that. Yeah, I've got some lessons, though, from ski instructor Bob Carlson. Gave me some pointers on how to do it right. He certainly uh, did a good job because you'll see me coming down now. Just, you know, just much more polished. Can't you just, just tell the difference right there? I cannot tell a lie. That's Bob Carlson in my coat. And <laughs> Let's fall. <laughs> they were all wearing crash helmets, so did you see yeah. that off camera? Yeah, that'll do it for right. us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you back here tomorrow, I suppose. Good night. <laughs> Just Scribe 11, closed captioning for the hearing impaired, is funded by Northwest Airlines, offering convenient hourly flights from Minneapolis to Chicago. in the cold for this sale. It only lasts two days. Dayton's two-day sale, Wednesday and Thursday.
TJ Maxx presents the Nutcracker on Ice. Tickets available at all Ticketmaster locations. Call 989-5151.